Hello and welcome to the Art of Cattle. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I made this baby sleeping bag. Uh, that's the right way around. This baby sleeping bag for one of my godsons uh, using the Burda Kids uh, pattern um, 9782. And uh, it's marked it's super easy. I'm not sure I would agree. I think um, the method of putting it together is very easy. The explanation following along uh, that comes along with the pattern is not super easy to follow uh, given how they uh, give you I I mean the dressing gown uh, pattern, the, the, the Vogue pattern for the uh, uh, coat dress that I followed was a lot easier to understand what they meant than this pattern was. So just a warning if you're planning to be using it. I also made an alteration to the bottom of the sleeping bag so you can just fold it open and uh, do a quick but do a quick uh, diaper change without having to take off the entire sleeping bag. So uh, let's get into the video. This is the finished cut out pieces for my um, baby sleeping bag. Um, I think it's called. Uh, and um, I haven't cut out um, uh, from the pieces from the stretch fabric yet, but I wanted to show you what I did different from the original pattern. As you can see, uh, this big body piece, it's meant to be one big piece for the front and one for the back. But since I want it to be open down here so you can shake, uh, change a diaper without having to take it all off, uh, I cut off um, this piece a bit earlier and I'm going to fold this up and hem it uh, and then I made a second piece that's going to fold over so it's going to so be sort of like a um, uh, envelope fold here and I don't know if I have to put some button or something here or it will be okay by itself but um, we will see when we get so far. Um, I think it's going to be really, really cute, actually. I'm, I'm very happy with the fabric. I was a bit worried because um, when I got it, the back wasn't uh, very fussy and soft, just the outside. Uh, but I pre-washed it and it's already getting a bit uh, fussy and softer on the inside. So I think that's going to continue the more it gets washed and uh, you know baby clothes uh, kind of have to be washed uh, <laughs> frequently uh, so I think that's going to be fine um, it's not un uncomfortable or anything so uh, I think that's going to be good uh, but it's a real shame that it's not as fuzzy and nice and soft as the outside um, I was originally going to um, um, interline it with another fabric, but I tested it out and I felt it would it would be too thick, and I didn't want the baby to overheat. So um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing, and I'm probably not going to show you how also when I cut out this, uh, but I remembered I had forgot to pre-wash this so I'm going to do that before I do the cutting out uh, but I should be able to start sewing on these pieces pieces while I while I wait for a um, uh, laundry room time so yeah I'm going to get started on this I started out with folding up the hem for my uh, uh, special envelope fold pieces. I think envelope fold is a good description, but I might be wrong. <laughs> so please excuse me, excuse me if I am. 
So I'm just folding it up one centimeter and then another centimeter, press it with the iron and pin it yeah, on both, both the large piece and the smaller piece. And then I'm just sewing down my hem. Close to the edge of that inner fold. Then I'm pinning my two front pieces to the large back piece, making sure that the edges line up so the overlap is uh, at right point. Uh, and uh, as you can see, Sokka is inspecting what I'm doing, uh, so I had to remove him because he was getting in my way. Uh, I was uh, kind of worried that the overlap would be the wrong way around, uh, but uh, if you just if you are doing this just put the smaller piece on first and then it's going to end up on top of it if you're putting the pieces together right sides together so this is a, a rather big piece uh, so that takes a one to, a while to pin so I had a nice time hanging out with Sokka with the <laughs> ironing board, he really likes lying there. Then I'm stitching together the main body pieces. I'm just using a straight stitch as at first and having, a, having to be careful there where my pieces overlap. And I uh, forgot to film it, I think, uh, forgot to include it in my video, I think, but I, I stopped it at the opening at one of the sides of the body. Here I'm trimming off the seam allowance. As you can see, there I left an opening on one side of the body. Yes. Uh, and then I'm zigzagging my seam allowance. Here I'm folding my sleeves and pinning them together. I had a really hard time editing out all the footage with uh, my cats in it. Then I'm stitching together the sleeves. And trimming the seam allowance. And zigzagging the seam allowance. Here I'm putting together the cuffs, just folding them and pinning them. And here's going, it's going to be a bit uh, different when I get to sewing, because this is in a um, knitted fabric, so I'm using sort of a um, lightning bolt um, stitch, I don't know what it's called. Um, and then I'm trimming the seam allowance. Uh, so I needed a stitch uh, that will um, you know, uh, stretch with the fabric. You have folding up the cuffs with the uh, inside, uh, inside of the fold, so to speak. And then I'm attaching the cuff to the lower portion of the sleeve. Making sure to stretch it out to match it up with the fabric. This is the first time I work with this kind of um, stretchy fabric. So, uh, um, especially in relation to non stretch fabric. So I'm kind of proud of how it turned out. Here I'm stitching it to the um, sleeve and I'm using that lightning bolt stitch and stretching out uh, the fabric to match um, the sleeve. It was not very easy <laughs> on the cuffs because of uh, how small of a space it was. Then I'm trimming off the seam allowance.
and then I'm zigzagging the seam allowance. This is uh, following the, the instructions. And here I'm pinning the sleeves to the body of the garment. And on one side you only pin it to the back uh, because the opening is at the front. Um, so I had to keep that in mind. Sorry if my cat is um, speaking in the background. He wants to go for a walk, but I don't have the energy and it's too late anyway, so. Here I'm stitching on the sleeve. Trimming the seam allowance. Not a repetition when it comes to the seam allowance, but I thought I would include it if you're struggling with the pattern instructions. Uh, and then I'm zigzagging the seam allowance. Here I'm folding over the planchette or, or whatever it's called, the like um, um, opening uh, fold thingy. Um, and uh, I just uh, used a uh, book binding tool to help press it because I was too lazy to pull out my uh, ironing supplies at that point. And then I'm pinning that to uh, the main body and the sleeve of the garment. Following the instructions that comes with the pattern. And it was kind of a struggle to get it to work and it still didn't line up right with the sleeve and I don't know how that happened so just a bit of a struggle then uh, I was stitching that down to the body and here I'm zigzagging the other part of the opening um, it wasn't very clear in how I filmed it, so I apologize. Then I'm trimming down the seam allowance uh, of that piece I sewed on and zigzagging the seam allowance as well. My sewing machine was acting up a bit here, that's why I'm lifting the foot a lot. Then I'm just marking uh, uh, with all my seam allowance so I know how much I should fold in on the other side of the opening Plackets, that's what it's called, placket Sometimes words just really hard It's much easier when I'm writing and I can like put a pin in it <laughs> when I can't remember a word and then I'm basting down that folded over seam allowance the, that fold there in the corner uh, was uh, really hard to get nice uh, but I think I managed in the end and then I'm uh, sewing down that hem by hand and I'm just picking up one state uh, one uh, thread of the fabric underneath so it's not visible at all on the outside which is really satisfying to look at later on <laughs> I think And then I'm making sure that they, uh, the front and the back overlap as they are supposed to and pinning it. And then I'm going to sew that uh, lower portion of the placket to uh, the uh, front of the garment. Again, making sure the stitches aren't visible on the outside. And then I'm 
folding over the um, like collar of the garment and pinning each side. Then I'm using that lightning bolt stitch to sew up the sides. Trimming the seam allowance. And folding the collar right side out. Making sure that the uh, points at the ends are, or, or like corners at the ends are nicely uh, aligned or like um, folded out and then I'm pinning those together to keep each side together when I'm when I'm not pinning it to the opening of the neck of the garment and again uh, stretching the stretchy fabric to match the non-stretchy fabric um, and making sure that it's evenly distributed around uh, along the neckline and then I'm stitching the collar to the neckline using the lightning bolt stitch Then I'm trimming off the seam allowance. And zigzagging it. Then I'm hand sewing all the snap buttons. I have sort of a thing for um, like pressing them. Uh, to the garment but I can't figure out how it's meant to be used and I sort of find the sewing on um, snap button uh, kind of relaxing so I just went with it but it was a lot of snap buttons so maybe should have learned to use the other thing uh, I think I'm going to cut put a couple of stitches here just to keep it from wanting to flip open and I'm also going to put mm, what two or three snaps here just small ones I have I have some some small ones somewhere when I'm at the thrift store I buy snaps because I like working with snaps for some reason, um, I thought I had some small ones. I guess these are kind of smaller ones. Yeah, so we're just going to put a couple. I'm going to put some pins in it and just move it around and see what happens and see if I can get away with just putting in two because I just sewn a bunch um, or if I have to have three uh, but anyway I have to um, put a couple of stitches here or maybe just, um, just one a couple of stitches in one place a bit in to keep it in place but I'm going to try to make them invisible um, yeah so that's just to keep this from flipping open and uh, letting in cold air but I want this to be super accessible for diaper changes uh, so um, it's easier for the baby's parents so I'm going to get started. Okay, so I sewed a couple of stitches uh, at each side where I indicated I probably would put them. So that's what I did. Just uh, joined the layers a bit. Uh, and I think that worked great. And then I sewed on the snap buttons. Uh, in the end I only used two. Thankfully I was tired of sewing them by that time. 
and I later on tested this garment on my godson and he's a bit too small for it right now but it's going to grow into it and the opening functions as it's supposed to so it was a success and then when I've sewn on these buttons it is finished And that's it, the finished product. <laughs> I think it turned out super cute. It's cozy and snuggly and I really hope that he will like it and that his mom will like it. Uh, one thing that I didn't show in the video but I want to show here. I followed along the pattern and I followed along the instructions. Um, even though I struggled to understand them at certain points and still um, this point of um, uh, the fold here uh, ended up uh, further down than it should have uh, so I had to put the button here instead and this didn't line up with the underside of the uh, the um, sleeve uh, either so I just made a fix there and I think it looks nice and it's, it won't cause any problem uh, I just uh, was a bit annoyed that it didn't work out as it was supposed to and I couldn't figure out why it didn't do that so yeah uh, I kind of struggled with the instructions for this pattern um, I would not um, class the instructions that's super easy the pattern and how you're meant to put it together sure uh, when you understand the instruction it's super easy but the instruction makes it a lot harder than it needs to be and the fact that um, they wanted to cram in so many languages um, in the way they made it uh, the instructions feel so far removed from uh, the, the pictures and the instructions feel so far removed from each other that it's really hard to understand what they mean uh, I felt anyway but uh, then pro product <laughs> turned out great and I'm going to wrap this up and give it to uh, my baby godson and well, I guess his mom, he's too small to open it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And it's so snuggly. I love the fabric. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos in the future, you may want to subscribe and hit the notification bell. May the stars shine upon your faces and have a glorious day. Thank you and goodbye for now.